Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. I hope you all remembered... Starting off the news this week, scientists based at the JET Laboratory in the UK have announced that recent experiments on fusion power have proved to be a success, both a major milestone for this futuristic energy source and a crucial one, as a failure of these experiments would have been a major setback for global fusion energy efforts. The experiment saw the fusion of two different isotopes of hydrogen and produced 59 megajoules of energy over the course of five seconds. This might not be an impressive amount of power yet, but the JET Laboratory has now broken its own record and this experiment, and its success, is of major importance to the ITER facility in France, which is helping lead global efforts for fusion power. Don't get too excited though, fusion power is still many decades off yet. In other news, a study published in the journal Current Biology has found that chimpanzees use insects for self-medication, that is, they use them to treat wounds. This isn't the first instance of self-medication observed in other animals, but it is the first instance of insects, or insect parts, being used. Usually, this comes in the form of animals eating plants to combat internal parasites. In this study, chimpanzees were observed regularly capturing insects and applying them into open wounds, although how impactful and useful that actually is, is yet to be studied in detail. That will be the team behind this paper's next goal, so I look forward to seeing the results of that in the future. And now over to Ben with some news of the most difficult kind. Thanks Doug. Well it's been a good week for dinosaur fans as the first officially published new non-avian dinosaur of 2022 has just been named. And what better way to start things off this year than with a new titanosaurian sauropod. Named Abditosaurus cuenii, this dinosaur was discovered in late Cretaceous Maastrichtian aged rocks in the Catalonia region of Spain. Based on surprisingly complete material for a sauropod from this area, an analysis of this animal's evolutionary relationships found that it actually grouped with the Saltosaurine titanosaurs, a group that until now was known almost entirely from South America and Africa, and not with the other European titanosaurs that lived at this time. This obviously has some fascinating paleobiogeographical implications, supporting the idea that titanosaurs from the southern continent of Gondwana had migrated into Europe towards the end of the Cretaceous. This is further backed up by typically Gondwanan titanosaur eggs that have been recovered from Europe previously. Abditosaurus was very large in size and lacked features of its bone growth that indicate insular dwarfism and size reduction, which had occurred among the European titanosaurs as Europe consisted of many archipelagos at this time, showing that this new titanosaur comes from a lineage that migrated here and retained large body size. This potentially happened around 70.6 million years ago when sea levels dropped and ancient dispersal routes between Africa and Europe reappeared, enabling this sauropod crossover event. The paper goes on to explain how the arrival of the giant titanosaurs into the European archipelago would have had massive impact on the ecosystems here and changes to dinosaur evolution. It's a really amazing discovery. Also in the news, a huge monograph on the strange Maniraptor and theropod dinosaur Fukui Venator from the early Cretaceous of Japan has just been published, which reanalyzes known material using computer tomography. Among other things, this publication finds that this dinosaur is actually the most basal therizinosaur known so far, which is quite an exciting discovery. It displays many features that unite it with this bizarre theropod grouping, and is even interpreted as omnivorous, indicating that this dietary shift occurred very early on in therizinosaurs. Additionally, it apparently had an unusually acute sense of smell, as indicated by its large olfactory ratio, seeming to suggest that this might be characteristic of these fascinating theropods. So that's a pretty fantastic discovery that tells us a lot more about these remarkable dinosaurs. And finally for this week, we end with possibly the most important paleontological discovery of our time. From an Eocene age site in Vietnam, an incredible fossil has been discovered, a footprint on a coprolite. The makers of both the footprint and the coprolite, the technical term for fossilised faeces, were both crocodilians, with a footprint producer likely being a 2 metre long croc that was unfortunate enough to step on this excrement, leaving behind a trace of the fourth or fifth finger of its right hand. The specimen itself was one of 100 coprolite specimens recovered from a coal mine in northern Vietnam, but is clearly very special in preserving a unique example of ancient behaviour. In this case, a record of this crocodilian's really bad day over 35 million years ago. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next week.